Hey, good morning to you. Mark Sabbath Hurricane Track here, Monday now, the 22nd of September 2025. So very good of you to tune into today's video. Got a lot to talk about with you. The tropics really starting to ramp up now. A very impressive and dangerous typhoon, super typhoon as it's technically labeled, way over in the West Pack. Eastern Pacific staying busy. And of course, now, all of a sudden, the Atlantic Basin starting to look a lot more interesting with a big duel getting ready to set up once again, of course, between the GFS and the Euro, the ECMWF models. Both of those going head to head with these two potential systems out here. We will look at all of that and more in today's update. So let's get started. First, a post here from my good friend who is way down there in Miami, Florida now, Dylan Federico, busy Atlantic, just like that. You know, once you get towards the latter part of September, even in a season with a very stable overall tropics, eventually the instability becomes more naturally occurring, and bam, here you go. Stuff starts to light up, and the backloaded season that we thought might happen looks like it could be on its way in. So we've got a very busy Atlantic. No invest areas yet. We do have Gabrielle, which is well on its way to becoming a major hurricane, southeast of Bermuda by a very comfortable margin, but then a couple of additional systems, Umberto and Amelda, either one of those or both could be in the offing over the next several days. So here's what it looks like on the track map, and all of a sudden, look at that, it's already updated. Gabrielle is a Category 3, now forecast to become a 4. This map literally updated while I was running my yapper <laughs> doing the introduction to today's video. So it's official now. Gabrielle, a major hurricane now, Category 3, forecast to be a 4. Wait till I show you the satellite animation of it. You'll totally understand why it has strengthened so quickly. Of little surprise, we have seen these things strengthen in the subtropics many times in the past. And so here we are. And the good news, of course, is it is well to the south and east of Bermuda. But because it's now a very intense hurricane, the swells that will get generated are going to radiate out in all directions, but those that I'm aiming back towards land areas are just for that point there. Yes, we're going to have some swells and potential rip current problems, mainly North Carolina and points north, trying to drop me out of the shot for a second, uh, as we get through the next several days, and uh, this hurricane being pretty strong now, uh, will generate even more of those big swells and that will impact areas along the coast. So just pay attention. The beach season more or less over. You know, officially summer's come and gone. But if you're heading down to the beach, just watch. All right, be careful. Rip currents can be very problematic. Let's not ignore the East Pack. We'll look at this real quick. Tropical storm Narda. Nice strong high pressure to the north, meaning it'll stay off to the west. So no threat to the Baja or anything like that. All right, so let me show you Gabrielle real quick. Look at that. Now, major hurricane Gabrielle, Category 3, very well-defined eye now starting to show up inside of this. Let's pause it on that last frame. This very symmetrical area of deep thunderstorm activity, that's the convection. You can see the outflow. Howard and all my other friends over there in Bermuda, beautiful outflow. Clouds that you can see, I bet time lapses of that any port cams or whatever, that would be pretty awesome to see. You run that animation again, and you can see how that was coming in just before sunrise and the last couple of hours or so. But yeah, there it is, a very intense hurricane, and uh, forecast to get even stronger, make it up to Category 4. By the way, and I know this only matters to most of the deep weather geeks out there, this is going to help to boost that ace count the accumulated cyclone energy, that score is going to start going up again. And if we get these other development areas happening and we have simultaneous tropical cyclones going on, I mean, there's a chance that we could have three on the map at the same time, and that ace count could really start to skyrocket, making up for some lost time. Again, that's more for the metrics of the season, the quality. The higher the ace count, the more quality the hurricanes Usually it's hurricanes that do that, right? They give you the higher A scores. Of course it is. Uh, the higher that A score shows you, shows you the more quality or intense the hurricanes were in a given season. Now this is just a little bit old. 742 is when Dylan posted this. 
second tweet here from my friend Dylan, showing Bermuda and the radar shot of that well-developed eye wall way off to the south and east, which is a good thing. Uh, that was kind of a close call if you really think about it. I mean, you know, especially how intense Gabrielle has become all of a sudden. Now, I don't want to ignore as well what's happening in the West Pack. I want to look at this really quick. Super Typhoon Ragasa, and it moved over these islands here in the Luzon Strait. And oh my goodness, the, uh, the terrifying nature to this overnight into the morning. At least it happened in the daytime. Uh, not a lot of people live out here, but, you know, one person is one person too many that had to deal with this. And, uh, very well defined super typhoon, probably going to re-strengthen some as it's going through an eye wall replacement cycle, it looks like, and eventually head towards mainland China and, uh, luckily to the south of Hong Kong. But this is going to come in and, uh, be quite a newsmaker over the coming days as it heads on out to the west after passing through these islands. So globally, and this does bring me up to the current, where we want to go and look at the Atlantic. I know most of the people that watch these videos are more interested in the Atlantic Basin than anything, but this really illustrates what I was talking about Friday, that globally it looks like we're having a big uptick in tropical cyclone activity, and it is not by coincidence. As you get later in the year, the northern hemisphere starts to cool off and you cool those upper levels, and any instability issues start naturally mixing out. And now we're starting to see things really ramp up. I mean, that typhoon there, that was really, really intense overnight. It's weakened some today. Uh, but yeah, things are starting to really pop. And we can see that on this satellite animation. There is our tropical storm in the eastern Pacific. Here is now Category 3, Hurricane Gabrielle. This is going to be an invest area before too long, I do imagine. This as well. And then there's another piece of energy sitting out here. So yes, we are starting to see, even though it's late September, what we would normally expect in late August. So maybe there is something to this notion that the season has just shifted a little bit. It's only been a few years now that we've really seen this, 2022, 23, 24. I mean, come on, that's a blip in geologic time, not even that. So it's hard to make much of it. But nevertheless, here we are the end of September, and things are starting to ramp up more and more. So I want to show you this from a vorticity perspective. Again, one of my favorite tools. This is the orange area on the National Hurricane Center outlook map, and this is the red area in terms of the low-level vorticity. And this is from yesterday evening at 0 UTC, and I want to fast-forward it to not long ago at 0900. So you can see how these are progressing. Definitely have, we definitely have the vorticity signature on both of these features. So trackable entities, and I mean, it goes without saying, just go back and look at the satellite animation. We can clearly see both of these features sitting out here and, uh, they're going to move off and maybe do something. So let's see what they might do. Let's just progress on to the model wars. I should have like one of those sting graphics that you pop up, you know, anyway, like you see on, uh, ESPN or something. Uh, but look, seriously, this is really going to be an interesting week because the GFS and the Euro are literally at odds with each other. And of course they are, right? Why would they ever be in concert? It never seems like they are. So let's look at the GF first, GFS first. This is the operational model, of course. And then we will compare it to the Euro and see what we've got. So this is the 0Z or 6Z, sorry. A lot to go over with you, so forgive me. The 6Z run of the GFS, there is now Category 3 Gabrielle. That's the reflection of the orange area. You see, this is why we have invest numbers eventually. That way you can call it 93L or whatever. When you just say this area and that area, it gets really confusing. Anyhow, that's the orange area. This is the red area. All right? So let's watch what the old GFS does with all of these systems over the next week. So let's take it out to 24, 48 hours. Let's see if we notice anything. And eh, not much anything, you know, that really stands out. But by 72 hours, things start to get interesting. The GFS doesn't do much with the red area, which is there at that point, but starts to blossom the orange area north of Puerto Rico by day three. 
And that's important. That's just three days out. You would think that the model would be good enough that it's not going to botch this. Because what happens after that, by day four, you know, pretty much knocking on the door of a tropical cyclone with the orange area, the red area is, eh, not much at all. Meanwhile, Gabrielle sitting over here near the Azores, this could be a very long track ace maker out over the Atlantic, by the way, really boosting that ace score. I know I keep harping on that, but it's important, and Gabrielle's still sitting there. So anyway, now we get out to day five, and we do have a bona fide tropical cyclone sitting down here just to the east of the southern Bahamas at about 992 millibars. And we can zoom in, look at the uh, western Atlantic extent here, and just move on all the way through to day six. And then finally out here to day seven, a Category 1 hurricane potentially parked right off of Cape Hatteras. Wait, what? Like, that wasn't there recently. I mean, it's been creeping in since I last did a video on Friday. But that's an interesting change uh, from what we have seen recently, certainly, you know, and, and then it kind of goes up and on out. I don't want to go too far into the future. But let's back this up and change the extent and everything back to where we started so we can compare apples to apples. But in this case, it might be apples to bananas. You'll see. So here's the Euro. This is the 0Z zero -Z run because we get the full run here on the tidbit site. And again, our players, Gabrielle, uh, orange area, red area. All right, so let's see what the Euro does. This is just nuts. Look at this. So the Euro takes Gabrielle out, same kind of deal like the GFS shows, but the Euro develops the red area by about four days out and uh, not the orange area. So they flipped, right? They, they're just, hey, I'm going to go with red, you go with orange. That's kind of like what the GFS and the Euro have seemed to come to an agreement upon. And by day five, the red area is bona fide tropical cyclone. Uh, day six, very much so, and so forth and so on. So let's look at these comparatively uh, at day seven. We'll slide the GFS out to day seven. And let's look at these two. You couldn't get any, I mean, what? <laughs> That's just bananas. It really is. Back to my point, apples and bananas, right? So... This would be the orange area. This is the red area. Uh, yeah. So here's the takeaway. We don't know what's going to happen. Very confusing when you have two global models, the operationals, and then you know you get into the ensembles, and then all the Google DeepMind and the Euro AI and all that. It's just too much. So I'm going to focus on what I have looked at for the better part, especially in the age of tidbits and all of that, 15 to 20 years. The global models, the regular physical models, physics-based models, uh, even though they have their flaws, they are just much easier for me to understand, wrap my brain around, and reconcile some of these weird things that happen. It is definitely possible that both areas could develop. Why the GFS isn't seeing the red area, considering it looks much better on satellite and vorticity-wise already, is a little bit confounding. I don't know why. So it is possible that both of these develop and they're far enough apart that they could, uh, I guess, exist independently. And that could be a very interesting scenario. Um, and then the other part of this, and this is interesting, if the Euro is to be believed with its overall upper level pattern, then whatever does try to develop from that orange area could get a lot closer to the United States than what the GFS is showing. So there's a lot of implications here. More than just, hey, where are those little blobs that you're showing ending up? The steering pattern is really going to matter in terms of what happens with these systems. All right? So there's the GFS in a week. There's the Euro in a week. Stay tuned. It's going to be quite interesting. Now, speaking of interesting, water temperatures, this is going to be important. The anomalies here, remember, these are not the actual temperatures. These are the departures from the average. And generally speaking, off the Iberian Peninsula here, Northeast Atlantic, etc., all through the main development region into the Gulf, more or less warmer than average. You certainly don't see any cold anomalies through here like you do down in the Pacific. And our Nino, not, you know, that's gone, it's a La Nina look. The Inso is what I meant to say, the overall Inso state. La Nina looking. And notice too, the Gulf has warmed back up. 
And it doesn't take much, just a shift in the wind pattern. And we can zoom in and I can show you that. Uh, yeah, we've lost a lot of those cool anomalies in the Northeast Gulf as of late. But yeah, all of this area through here, quite a bit warmer than the long-term average. A little bit cooler right up against the shelf water areas. We can worry about that if we need to later in the week, if something does try to develop. But point is, all of this water sitting out here, the Atlantic, Southwest Atlantic, running at least a half to a degree Celsius above the long-term average. So if anything does get going from our systems out here, again, that's the orange area, there's the red area, lots of energy for these to take advantage of in the Atlantic Basin. So yeah, I think it's very appropriate to have that as the thumbnail for today. Things are definitely ramping up. And again, not just in the Atlantic, but on a global scale, all of a sudden the tropics are making news again. And really not a surprise to those of us that watch this closely we figured it was just a matter of time. You get more natural instability in the Northern Hemisphere, and here you go. All right, well, that is it from me for today. It's going to be an interesting week, so stay tuned. And as always, thanks for watching. From uh, all of us at Hurricane Track, I am Mark Suddeth. I'll see you again tomorrow.